There is no medicine which will prevent it. Keep away from public meetings, theaters, and other places where crowds are assembled. Keep the mouth and nose covered while coughing and sneezing. When a member of the household becomes ill, place him in a room by himself. The room should be warmed, but well ventilated. The attendant should put on a mask before entering the room of those ill of the disease. These were some pieces of advice given out to people who lived under one of history's worst epidemics, the 1918 Influenza Epidemic, more commonly known as the Spanish Flu. Lasting from 1918 to 1920, this pandemic spread around the world and infected an estimated 27% of the world's population, or roughly 500 million people. The death toll is much more variable, as you have some estimates as low as 17 million people, but some as high as 100 million people, with the average numbers tending to be between 30 and 50 million people. Depending on which numbers are correct, we can use those average guesses and say 40 million people, which means that's a death toll of roughly 2% of the entire world population, and the disease would have had, therefore, a roughly 8% mortality rate. But why did it infect so many people to become the second deadliest epidemic of all time behind the original bubonic plague? And why were the mortality rates so variable? The answer to both of those questions is variable health practices. Firstly, the name Spanish flu is a misnomer. Part of the reason why it got the name was because there was a false impression that Spain got hit harder by the disease than everywhere else. The reality is, when the pandemic began to start in early 1918, almost every other major country was in World War I. Because Spain was neutral, their papers weren't constantly filled with information about the war, and they weren't under any wartime censorship like some other countries were. As a result, newspapers from Spain freely talked about the disease before most countries, and a higher amount than most countries. Even the Spanish King Alfonso XIII got infected. If you were to do research and follow a paper trail, it's not that unreasonable to take all that and assume that it must have started in Spain. In reality, we're not quite sure where it started. We have three hypotheses of origin. Kansas in the United States, Northern China, and France. Notably, China was one of the areas least affected by the disease, so one of the ideas is the population there had developed natural immunity to the disease, but due to Europe and America opening up trade with China as well as travel, the disease made its way to those areas and then took off. The theory for the United States or France is basically inadequate hygiene practices as well as distraction from World War I, which allowed it to spread. Regardless, World War I definitely helped it spread. The strain of flu involved wasn't inherently more aggressive or contagious than other forms of the flu, but malnourishment and poor hygiene would help spread it. And what's less hygienic and constantly fed than soldiers on the Western Front of World War I? Then you add to the fact that war hospitals were already overcrowded, so it was hard to get treatment and it also made hospitals hotspots for spreading the disease. The 1918 influenza epidemic also notably changed its victims throughout each wave. The first wave in 1918 was similar to a normal flu, but the second wave of this disease notably affected the young more than the old. One theory is the older population was slightly immune due to previous flu outbreaks from the 1890s. Regardless, this caused the 1918 wave of the flu to harm younger people way more than older people, so much so that people under 65 were 99% of those infected. To make things weirder, it got worse in the summer instead of the winter, which was different than most flus. Research done much later figured out that it seemed to be a case that younger adult immune systems overreacted to the disease which made the body weaker, and then something like pneumonia that followed would typically cause the death, and for some reason the immune systems of younger children and older adults did not do that same reaction. But as the war ended in 1918, the soldiers began to head home, which caused the disease to spread even more. The epidemic lasted into 1919 and 1920. As this happened, many countries took measures to try to combat it. Flu masks became very popular, much like how there are masks today, and hilariously there were even multiple styles of the masks. They also encouraged to get fresh air by either being outside or making sure rooms were well ventilated, but to also avoid crowds. As a result, social distancing was very much encouraged, as typical places of entertainment would be closed down, as well as schools. Most importantly, though, places encouraged resilience and not to panic. Sickness at this time was very normal before the flu, and while this strain of flu infected hundreds of millions of people, they still tried to promote an atmosphere of firm action and firm heart. 
One of my favorite things I found while working on this video was this New Haven paper where it instructs the people to avoid worry, fear, and fatigue. However, some cities and countries handled the pandemic better than others. It didn't matter what system or how many doctors you had, if you had too many sick people to the number of hospitals and doctors, you were going to have a bad time. In the United States, the actions of cities such as Los Angeles and St. Louis helped keep the infection at a constant pace so it could level off, while other cities like Philadelphia had a much harder time. Internationally, the war hospitals being crowded didn't help, and colonial areas with inadequate health systems got especially hurt. But ultimately, after 1920, the pandemic was finally over. And to the shock of the world, it ended up being just as deadly, if not deadlier, than World War I itself. Those two events killed so many younger people that it gave the generation the nickname of the Lost Generation. The recent corona epidemic has caused some people to think that we're overreacting a little. But regardless, it's at least evident that we're learning from epidemics of the past and trying to handle things quicker than before. So as this video ends, I encourage all of you to avoid worry, fear, and fatigue. And also wash your darn hands already. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, or you can support this channel through my Patreon. We're gonna need all the help we can get as we're all stuck at home all day. I'm Emperor Tigerstar, and I'll see you guys next time.